Here's my design for a relay-based SRAM uh, memory storage unit. Uh, this design is uh, good because it uses very few relays, in fact, uh, for an n bit wide storage location, it uses only n plus 2 relays. In this diagram, you can see the schematic here, uh, we have actually two uh, bits of storage per location, and we're implementing on this diagram two locations. And of course, we could extend this easily to incorporate more bits or more memory locations. And the additional two relays are over to the left side of your screen there. Those are used uh, to control the um, uh, control signals over here. We have a active high set signal, an active low clear signal, and an active low read signal. And those are enabled when this set of address inputs uh, match the particular combination that we need for that memory location. All of the signals in this system are active low open collector style um, signals, meaning that if the line is driven low, that indicates a zero, and if it is floating, that indicates a one. These address lines here need to be actually be tied to these address lines here, and they would run to a separate circuit, which is not shown here, which would just um, generate uh, both uh, the address line and the inverted sense of that address line. And for example, if I wanted this memory location to be active um, when uh, A0 was low, I would actually need to tie this here to the inverted sense of A0. So basically, if any of these um, address inputs are low, relay will flip across here and the control signals will not be applied to that memory location. So if all of these inputs are floating, then this memory location is selected. So that's why I would need to have uh, for A0 uh, to be low to select this one. I actually need this to be tied to the inverse of A0 um, so that the inverse of A0 would be high, meaning that that would enable this location to be selected. Um, to store a value in memory once the addresses are selected, Again, set, clear, and read um, control signals are going to be tied together. Those are global for the entire memory uh, circuit. And the sequence to store a value in memory would be to apply um, the data to the data bus, apply your address to the address bus, and then uh, sequence what would normally be a low on the set and a high on the clear. We would need to, first of all, drive clear low and then drive it high, and then drive set high, and then bring set low. And at that point, whatever data was stored, or whatever data was present on the data bus will be stored in the relays. To read from a memory location, all we need to do is set up our address locations and drive uh, our read signal low. Okay, let's have a look at this circuit in action. This is a breadboard version of the schematic that you just saw, and it has one, two control relays and one, two data relays per memory location, and another memory location with another four relays. The last two relays up here that you see are uh, simply because, uh, simply needed because the um, logic being as it is with open collector style um, active low um, signals, I find it much easier to work with uh, ones being lit up than zeros being lit up. And these LEDs down here will be lit up if there is a one stored in that particular memory location. Uh, in order to invert the data bus so that if we are reading or writing to a memory location we can see what's on the data bus. These relays invert those signals so that instead of just floating and having the LED turned off on a one on that particular bus line, uh, these LEDs will be turned on if that uh, bus line is floating, meaning we have a one on that bus line. 
We have a few control signals here. There's only one address line that's implemented, and this is just manually controlled to ground. If it's grounded, that memory location is not selected. If it is floating, that memory location is selected. Another memory address line here. We have our read, uh, memory read control line here. This is our active low clear and active high set uh, signals to actually store the value in memory. So we'll turn on our circuit. Initially, our data lines are floating with a 1 and a 1. And our um, all of our memory locations actually, by default, will float and just store 1s. Now what we're going to do here is drive the data bus. And we have two clips here and I'm just going to clip on to one data bus there which is going to drive it low one data bus line so now we have a zero one pattern and I can store that in a memory cell just by selecting it by floating that address line drive that memory cell low with the clear signal allow set to go high and once set becomes low again that value is actually stored in memory. I could store a different value in memory in my other cell here. I'll select that one. Cycle through my sequence to store the value in that memory cell. And now I have two separate values stored in memory. The last thing I might want to do is read from a memory cell. So I can select memory cell right here. And if I drive my read line low, now I have uh, 0, 1 onto the data bus. I could also, if I wanted to, select the other cell, read from that one, and I will get a 1, 0 pattern to match the value that's stored in this memory location here. And the interesting thing about having your active low open collector style logic is if you end up with some kind of a mistake where you have more than one memory location selected. In fact, if any of those, now I've selected both of these memory locations and said read from both of them, this memory location drives this address or this data bus line low, this memory location drives that data bus line low, and there's never a problem with um, conflicting signals on the bus line. Um, at least electrically, we're not going to be in a short circuit situation. So that is the um, relay-based uh, memory circuit uh, designed with as few relays as I can uh, do it, and uh, I hope that you enjoy it.